So, okay. all right. So my name is um, Knight. This is for Fluid Mechanics with Osbay. Uh, I'm Lucas Weber. Then we're going to run through those parts, and I'm going to talk about how we get to uh, set up, and then he'll talk about the three different uh, cases, and then that should be everything. So, uh, in this, uh, once we start the setup, we go to workbench, and we start in the geometry section, which is right here. Um, first, we have to draw a rectangle and the sketching. Uh, we did a 50 millimeter by 500 millimeter rectangle. Um, a 10 millimeter by 500, my bad. <laughs> 10 millimeter, yeah. Correct. Um, so it was just 50 times the height. Um, and then once we do that, we do the uh, surface. The surface is from sketches right here. And then we generate that, and it gives us this grayed out rectangle. And then once we do that, we can come to the meshing. And once we get here, we can do the automatic method and then start doing our edge sizing to get our faces. Uh, we did the inlet and the outlet, and then in between those, outlet, we uh, did 150 uh, for the number of divisions, and then we did it for the top wall and bottom wall as well, and did 300 for those. And then once we got that, we did the face meshing so that you can see all of our grids in here, and then it should look all blacked out. Um, and then we named our selections for the inlet, the outlet, top wall, bottom wall. And then once we get that, we can come to the setup right here. Um, all right, so if you want to. Yeah, I'll take over. So for our setup, first thing we did, we went to physics, and then we went to uh, the, I think it's viscous, and we changed it to laminar. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so then we went to air and we calculated our Reynolds number. Um, so for air, there's the density and the viscosity, which is one and then 0 0.0001. And we used our incoming velocity as 10 meters per second, which gave our Reynolds number to be around 10, uh, 1000. So that was laminar flow. So once we went to our boundary conditions, um, the boundary conditions for Poisel flow are, it's going to be a velocity inlet, a pressure outlet, and then both the walls are going to yep. be stationary. Uh, so we set all that up, um, and like I said, we set our incoming velocity to be 10 meters per second. So after we ended up doing that, we went to our reference values. We chose it to be from the inlet, um, and then we went to our initialization. We initialized it, um, and then we ran our calculation, uh, and we did 500 iterations, I believe. Uh, I'm sure so, that just changed. Yep. Yeah. So we ran that, um, and then I'll just explain all three cases here, and then we'll go to the next, um, like, onto the actual yeah. solution. And then, so then for quet flow, we went and changed the inlet. The inlet's going to be changed to a pressure inlet, and then the top wall we made it move with a velocity of five meters per second. Uh, so that's how quet flow works. Um, yep. And still should say ten. Yeah, so that's what we did for quet flow. And once we did that, like, we did five. Yeah, we did yeah, five meters five. per second for that top plate. Um, and literally, like I said, it's just a pressure inlet, a pressure outlet. Um, so, top wall moving, then we changed the two, like, the, we changed the inlet from the velocity inlet to the pressure inlet. Uh, and then we just did the same thing. Once the reference values chose, um, like, compute from inlet, went to initialization, then went to our solution. Then, for the mixture of them both, um, it's a velocity inlet uh, and then a pressure outlet with the top plate moving. Um, so we just had that as well. Um, I believe we still had the top plate moving about five meters per second. Yeah, we did five for both. Yep. And then we went to our reference values. We went to initialization. Our reference values, we still had compute from the inlet. Went to our initialization, initialized it, and then went to our solution and then calculated our solution. If you want to bring up the next uh, tab. Yep. So then... From here, what we ended up doing is we went to insert, um, and then we inserted our lines for the halfway point and the end point, which in our case, it's 500 millimeters long. So halfway Take point is at 250 contour. millimeters, and our end point's at 500 millimeters. And we also did, like Lucas said, the contour map. 
So um, we turned the contours on uh, and we kind of made it horizontal instead of vertical. And we have our maximum velocity right there. So uh, for that, from there, we went to our graph and we graphed it with the, um, the velocity u on the x-axis and just the y-axis being the y-axis and gave us a paraboloid for, um, it gave us a paraboloid for the um, Poisel flow, it gave us a linear, um, uh, I'm blanking on the word, but it gave us a linear kind of graph for the coet flow and then it gave us a paraboloid back for the uh, for the combination of the both of them. So that's pretty much it. We've taken screenshots of our, not only our, that screen for the contours and velocity contours, but we've also taken a screenshot of the chart viewer, which has our maximum velocity and the height that it was achieved at. Um, and that's pretty much it for the project. Um, Lucas, I don't know if you want to add anything, but. Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Uh, yep. Each one of the cases is just changing a few different things, so. So we'll be sure to include all those screenshots in our report, as well as both of our names, and we'll be sure to link this MP4 from the uh, from the Zoom in there as well. So yeah. All set. All right. Good. Thank all right. you.